So you want to know how to start a worm farm. Well, good. You're in the right place because that is what we're talking about today here at Hey, It's a Good Life. My name is Natalie. I'm a backyard farmer here in San Diego, California. And today I'm going to share with you our latest design, which is our worm farm. I'm going to share with you how to build a worm farm. What is a worm farm? I, I love worms so much. But more importantly, I'm going to show you how I built this worm farm and how you can build your own worm farm too. So thanks for joining me today. I'm so glad you're here. Without further ado, let's hop in. So first off, I know that getting started with a new form of composting can be kind of intimidating, which is why after years of doing it myself, I finally wrote these two books. This is my free quick start guide, which you can follow. It will help you get started with setting up your worm farm super quick and easy. And this is my other worm farm ebook, which is available in our Etsy shop. It is super comprehensive. It takes you through setup, maintenance, harvest, ways to use your casting. So whether you're just getting started or you want some more information, I wanna draw these worm farming resources to your attention because I think they're going to prove very valuable to you. Another thing we should talk about very briefly is I was checking my analytics and some of you be watching but not subscribing. So if you're not subscribed to this channel yet, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well. It's a way to support us for free and it helps our channel grow. Other ways you can support us for free are by hitting the thumbs up and leaving us a comment. Those also help us a lot. So thank you in advance for that. Now I know a lot of you are here to see how I built this and hopefully editing Natalie has figured out how to add chapters. Go ahead and click through the chapters that you wanna see if you wanna skip to certain parts of this video. I'll I'll also leave timestamps in the show notes down below. If you're here watching this video, you probably already know this, but let's talk about what is a worm farm. A worm farm is another way of saying a vermicompost setup. It's a way to use worms to make compost free fertilizer at home. If you're into sustainability, a worm farm is another great way to reduce your waste and carbon footprint. But for me as a gardener and somebody who's interested in homesteading and regenerative agriculture, a worm farm is so much more than that. For me, a worm farm is a way that we steward our dream of having livestock one day <laughs> as we learn to take care of this very low maintenance livestock, if you want to call it that. A worm farm is a way that we reduce our carbon footprint and we do a lot of composting out here with our food scraps. Contrary to popular belief though, worm farms don't need as much food scraps as you think they do. Uh, so it's not the only way that we compost our food here, but it is a way that we can compost leftover food scraps like apple cores or cucumber skins or whatever it may be. And as a gardener and a backyard farmer, a worm farm is a way that I make compost for free at home. And it's so much better than anything that you can buy in store, which we'll talk about at the end of this video. So if you're interested in learning more about the benefits of a worm farm for your farm or garden, stay tuned because we'll talk about that at the end because I don't want to bore you guys. I know why you're here. You're here to see how to build this. So you can compost in your apartment or you can compost in the city. But I just wanted to cover like, what is a worm farm and why might it be beneficial to you? There are so many reasons, but for us, it gets down to being more sustainable, stewarding our dreams and having a way to have wonderful bioavailable nutrients ready to go for our garden. And now I can introduce you to our worm farm. Worm farm, internet, internet, worm farm. This is our worm farm and it's very simple. I inherited this system off of Steven of Nature's Always Right. So if you wanna see like the entire original video of this worm farm setup, you can check that out in the links up above and down below. Uh, no matter what type of worm farm you go with, you wanna make sure that you've got proper airflow and drainage because too dry or too wet is not a good environment for worms. Want their environment to be something like that of a damp sponge not too cold, not too dry, somewhere right in between. And this has been a great setup to achieve that. So Steven did a really good job setting up these bins and I can just kind of give you a brief overview here that these bins essentially have a lot of holes around the top, not near the bottom so the worms don't escape, but near the top are spaced anywhere between one to two inches apart and he's drilled on the top of these lids, around the top of these bins, and as well as on the bottom. So like I mentioned, this system was given to me by Steven of Nature's Always Right. He's got a great channel. If you guys don't know that channel, you should definitely go check it out. I redesigned it to work better for our space because his original design was much longer and it was just harder to accommodate in our semi-urban setting. Whereas for him, it worked fine on his farm. Uh, but for us, I just needed something a little bit more compact and I wanted something that would also give me the ability to regenerate soil below this worm bin. So as you can see, there is room below these worm bins to place this entire setup over soil 
And as I water these worm bins and as leachate drains through, we'll be able to make our own very healthy soil biome below this setup. And that was something that was important to me. So that's why this setup is designed like that. It's a little bit more space efficient and it will help us regenerate soil below the bins. All right, let's talk worm farm supplies. If you need any supplies for making your worm farm and you'd like to support our channel for free, please consider using the links related to this episode because when you shop through those links, we are paid a small commission at no additional cost to you. It's a really easy way to support our channel for free, so thank you in advance. So for the structure of this project, I used wood that I found in the back of Lowe's and not like behind the building, like in the building. They had disassembled some pallets or something and I was able to find wood that was only heat treated. If you're gonna use pallet wood, make sure you're only using heat treated wood. Um, the stamp says HT on there, I believe, and you can look up the different stamps. Uh, but anyway, so I found some, so I found some heat treated wood that was once used, I believe in some kind of a pallet and they had disassembled it and just left it in the back of the lumber section. I said, can I take this? And they said, yes. So I got my wood for free. Something to consider. Sometimes you can find stuff in the back of like Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware center that they don't want, they don't need, they need to get rid of it. That's what I did and I got a lot of my materials for free. I also used deck screws, which I happen to have on hand from the thousands of other projects that I've done around here. I personally do like to pre-drill even though supposedly with deck screws you don't have to pre-drill. I generally always pre-drill my projects just to ensure that I'm not gonna crack the wood. Which brings me to the next point. I also used drill bits and an electric drill for this project. And I also used a staple gun, quarter inch staples and quarter inch mesh. Oh, and a note, <laughs> I would have loved to have used corner clamps on this project, but I have since returned the corner clamps to our neighbors and I don't have any corner clamps until Santa comes or until I make it big on YouTube. There you go, no corner clamps for me right now, but I highly recommend them. They're a great tool to have on hand if you're gonna build anything that you want to be super square. I've used them in the past, I miss them. One day I'll have my own and it will be wonderful. <laughs> but for now, I don't have corner clamps, but if you're wanting to make this project, I highly recommend you get some corner clamps. The lighting's getting a little funky on me out here, but onward we press. One day very soon, we'll have our farm and lush green pasture and lots of different lighting and angle setups. But for now, we're gonna throw some hay, it's a good life on this, shift a little bit and continue talking about worm farms. So step number one to making this worm farm, I made the frames. To make the frames, I just made sure that everything was level and screwed four pieces of wood together, measuring about 22 by 36 inches. Then I stapled on some quarter inch mesh. I overlapped the mesh to create additional support in the center of the frame. And I stapled those sheets in place with one staple about one to two inches apart. it was time to add the legs of this worm farm. This is where things got a little tricky without corner clamps, but I found a way. I made initial drill points. And once I was happy with the stability and the levelness of the project, I made the second drill points, which solidified the whole thing. Now at this point, you could add a little bit of wood glue, which I did, but I didn't get it on film. That just makes everything a little bit more stable. To 
create the totes, just use a quarter inch drill bit and drill all the way around every two inches or so. You can see how these were originally built over on Steven's channel, Nature's Always Right, as these were once his bins, but the idea is simple, airflow, drainage, holes, and you're good to go. Then you could remove the lid of one container and combine the totes and voila, you have a worm farm. talk about what's actually going to go in the bins. You can follow this guide. It's pretty simple. It breaks it all down for you. It's like a nice little map. The first thing that you want to do is you want to lay down some kind of piece of cardboard or several pieces of newspaper just along the drainage holes on the bottom. Then you're going to add your browns, water those down with some chlorine free water. Then you're going to add your food scraps and your grit, water that down a little bit. You're going to add your compost, soil, bedding, peat moss, whatever you're using for the worms to kind of start their life in. Add another layer of browns on top of that. That's basically it. You can repeat that process several times. In my quick start guide, I show you how to repeat it three times. More than that is probably excessive. So I would recommend just start with, you know, your three basic layers. But if you're feeling like you're really wanting to get into this and you want a lot of castings quick, like feel free to add multiple layers. It's really up to you. There's a lot of freedom in this. Don't worry, your worms will figure it out. So we've covered all the basics of like how to build a worm farm, but what does the process of being a worm farmer actually look like? I'm gonna break this down for you very simply, very quickly, okay? <laughs> this is my worm farming process. Build a worm farm, set up worm farm, wait two to three months, harvest castings, brew tea, apply to the leaves, drench the roots, add remaining castings and worms to soil if desired, yield abundance. Like, so simple. <laughs> I promised you guys we would talk a little bit about worm farm benefits. Now, if you're here, you likely already know all of this, but in case you don't, I figured it's worth mentioning and talking a little bit about. Starting a worm farm allows you to make fertilizer at home, essentially for free, which is pretty amazing if you ask me. <laughs> a worm farm is a great solution for composting in an apartment or composting in the city. It offers so many ways to compost and it doesn't smell. It's great, no smell. When your worm farm is healthy, there is no smell. So you don't have to worry about stinking up your apartment or your townhouse or anything like that. Like worm farms are great for so many reasons. Composting without smell. I love it. <laughs> worm castings are super balanced fertilizers. So if you know anything about NPK, like you want to make sure that you're adding the right nutrients at the right times for your plants. You don't have to worry about burning your plants with worm castings because they're super bioavailable and they're actually protected in this little mucous membrane that makes them slightly a little bit like a slow release fertilizer. It's not something that's going to be released into the environment all at once. It's something that will eventually leach out its nutrients over time. You will notice the benefits right away, but again, I've never experienced burning my plants with worm castings. And I attribute that to the fact that they are very balanced. They're nature's like slow release fertilizer, which is pretty cool. Worm castings and worm tea help prevent disease. I cannot tell you the difference that I saw in my garden this year using foliar feeding worm tea techniques in the garden. Like seriously, my garden exploded. We had so many less pests and disease. So I saw a huge difference in that alone and I cannot recommend it enough. Again, check out the video if you want to know more. Worm farming is so fun for everybody of all ages, but especially kids. If you have kids and you want to teach them about sustainability, about composting, worm farming is a great way to get them into learning how to be a better steward of their environment, learning how to be more sustainable. Just learning about worms in general is pretty cool if you ask me. I'm kind of a worm nerd though, so maybe I'm biased, but again, it's a great project for kids and it's something that's like safe and fun for the whole family. So if you're into that, another thing to consider is that your kids might really enjoy having a worm farm as well. And that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. I like to make lots of videos from our homestead, helping you guys throw some hay, it's a good life on things, make the most of it where you are, bloom where you're planted, keep dreaming, keep working towards those dreams because they're absolutely there for a reason. We need as many people as possible right now saying yes to regenerative farm dreams and yes to gardening and yes to growing food because the times are bleak and we must continue to say yes to those things. So if you're one of those people, good on you. Keep dreaming big. Keep making the most of your small space. Keep putting one foot in front of the next. I'm so proud of you. Keep going. 
we're here to root for you and thank you for rooting for us as well. Of course, if you want more support when it comes to vermicomposting and worm farming, I check out the whole playlist that I'm developing here on this channel. I hope it will offer a lot of value to you and offer you some new ideas when it comes to composting in a small space in a way that doesn't smell, in a way that's fun, and in a way that is great for your garden. Want to support our channel for free? Hit that thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell, leave us a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for joining us today, you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.